Who you are welcome to the Rapture Daily Devotional. This morning our text is from I mean our text today is from Second Chronicles chapter 35. It's about uh, the great work of uh, Josiah, King Josiah of Judah, and also how he died painfully. The painful death, it was a painful death, it was a tragic and painful death of Josiah. It was, it's recorded that Josiah, you know, was able to reverse the celebration of the Passover and did it in a manner that had not been done right from the days of Samuel the prophet. So Josiah beat the record, great record, beat the record of Saul, David, and all other one. You know, he did a great thing, remarkable achievement. The Passover was celebrated. As a matter of fact, Josiah became a preacher. He preached to the Levites and then to the to the priests. And he was able to reposition them. It was a great reign. Josiah had an excellent reign, which is word of you know, worthy of emulation. His revival, the you know, how he cling to the word of God, the law of the Lord, and he was ready to execute everything that was said. Or that was written in the law, and that was why he celebrated Passover just the same way, just the same way it was originally celebrated, which you know there were deviation. So Josiah was able to bring them back to the Asian landmark. There was a deviation over the years, the Passover celebration had deteriorated to a point whereby it was no longer celebrated again. So Josiah actually was able to you know return them back to the Asian landmark. There was a reverse that happened in the days of Josiah, the king. So like I was saying, Josiah is actually, you know, a man who returned the, a whole nation to where they missed it. Gradually, gradually, the Passover celebration, you know, they were, they were missing it. There were reduction in the celebration. The quality of the celebration was reducing until at the point it was no longer celebrated again. So Josiah, in his reign, found out from the copy of the law that was given to him. He found out where it was written, how the Passover should be celebrated. And Josiah, you know, spoke to the priest and the Levite and they were able to prepare themselves. He asked them to consecrate themselves. He preached to them. So the Levite were able to consecrate themselves, you know, put themselves in a place where they can celebrate the Passover. And that was how they were able to gloriously, honorably, you know, revert back to the originality, how it was done. And, you know, you may say they, are, they missed it, but look at it today. There are many things that were practiced in the order, they were practiced in the early church and that are biblical, are biblical practice, both of the Old Testament and of the, of the I mean, of the New Testament believer. That the church today have what we have deviated grossly from it. There are many of them. We can name them. You know, before, let me take as that before, you know, in the church, women don't enter church, you know, with, without a, using a veil or a scarf to cover their hair. It was traditional. Today we have deviated, gradually, 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 have deviated from it. You know, a church tradition have it that men, as written in the Bible, also 1 Corinthians 11, Men don't cover their hair in the place of worship. But today, what happened? Gradually, gradually men, they are now bringing, it started by Roman, the Roman invitation of the church. And then uh, the bishops, and the cardinals and the popes started using it. And today, people are now doing it. People are wearing cap, even preaching. So it's a desecration. You can name it. We grew up, I grew up with the, in a church that it was a taboo for a woman to wear trousers. But today, they are wearing it. Some of us grew up, you know, knowing that, uh, you know, there are a lot of things that we grew up knowing that were evil. Today, they are no longer evil again. So you see that there is a deviation. We are grossly deviated. You can name it. Look around. Your, look around. And you see there are many things that were practiced by the early church that today church is no longer practicing again. We have deviated. We have left a lot of things that, were, that, are, that are foundational, that are basic, that are commanded. Because we now talk about grace, 
that there is grace. So we don't need to keep God's commandment. And uh, it becomes a, you know, some of us who, who are seeing it differently are saying, no, grace does not nullify, you know, truth of the Bible. There are biblical truths that grace. So there are so many truths that uh, we've neglected, you know, because of grace. Because, you know, not knowing, it's not actually grace that is a problem. The problem is that we have what? We have apostatized, we have backslided. There was a gradual, you know, depreciation in the quality of the Passover celebration from the days of Samuel. And then it continued and it depreciated to the point that it came to an end. And that is what the devil does. And that is what is happening today to us. So I just mentioned an example. We can also cite there are more and more things. There are things that we grew up yesterday knowing them as values, Christian values. You know them as ethics of Christianity. But today, we are no longer holding to it again. Those values, those traditions, those, 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 those values that we treasure as Christians, as handed down to us and as contained in the Bible. Today, we, are, we no longer care again. Everybody does anything he wants to do. We, don't, we are not careful to, to, to do what the Lord had commanded us to do. We use grace and excuse, but Hold it here. We saw from the scriptures, first uh, Titus chapter 2, from verse 11, that the grace that brings salvation teaches men to what? To, de- to, to you know, you know, you know, to live godly, to live righteously, soberly. So there is a godly living, there are godly ways of doing things. So grace does not make us to be negligence of godly things or godly ways or or godly tradition, or godly customs, or godly custom, or godly values. No, that is not grace. So, thank God for people like uh, Josiah, who, who, be, who came as a prof, a prophetic seed, and he was able to take the people back to where they missed it and reversed them, reverted the celebration of the Passover to the originality. He, re- he actually brought, uh, brought back Passover celebration, which has been abandoned, and also restored the original Passover celebration. That was as how great Josiah went, you know, in his revivalist work. And he saw so great, such a wonderful man. So we pray that the Lord will raise for us such leaders, political, spiritual leaders, who will take us back to where we missed it from. Take us back to where we missed it from. That is why I will urge every one of you to do research. I've done a lot of research. Research about uh, Wesley Revival. Research about William Simon, which brought as a well Revival. I've done research about the Amish, the Mennonites. I've done research about the Christianity in the first and second century, the kind of life they lived. Amen. You look, you see that we have grossly been Babylonized. We have deviated so much from the apostolic Christianity. Today, a lot of things that were not practiced in the early church and even, even in the first, 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 first century and second century and third century and fourth century church, a lot of things that, that were practiced, we have dropped them. We have dropped so many practices, so many godly practices that they were doing. We have dropped them. So to us today, we are holding up to an act of religion, but we are denying the power thereof. And that is what Second uh, Timothy chapter 3 says. He said, for in the latter, he said, perilous according to the latter, they say, men shall be lovers of themselves. They hold on to it and not to religion, but they deny the power thereof. So, so many things have gone wrong. And we must ridicule this ancient, this well that has been covered. So many things. The past verse celebration was covered up. But in the time of Josiah, it was Josiah redug those wells, redug the well. And Jeremiah told them at the point where Jeremiah was announcing them, say, Jeremiah 16, say what? He said, What do you do? He said, he said, stand in the in the crossroad and ask for the for the for the Asian and good road. He said, walk in it. There is so much division, so much well had been covered up. We have covered a lot of wells. They need to be redug. They, they need to be redug. So many so many things that have been covered up. Christianity has been modernized and has been Babylonized. And all the things that made our faith so powerful. We have, we have neglected them. The Bible says the woman must cover their head because of the angel. We neglected them. 
Early church, it was a taboo for a woman to pierce her ear and put jewelry. We neglected those wells. We covered those wells. We now use grace to cover them. So many wells have been covered. Just like the pastor was covering the time of Jesus, covered up. And Josiah has to read. Josiah, Josiah search the scripture. Because Josiah asked the story read to him. And he saw. And he was ready, willing to do everything that is written. I don't want to say some things now. As time goes on, I'm, I'm going to be saying some things that are going to help us. We need to return back to what it is before. What we are priced today as Christianity is not what was handed down to us. And that is why Jude says that, he said that you should contend for the faith that is once and for all delivered to the saints. He said, for many people have crept in on notice. They are perverting the grace of the Lord. That is what had happened. Jude 1. So much perversion had happened to the Christianity. Just like what Paul told the Galatians, Galatians 3, say, oh, bewitch you Galatians. So there is so much bewitchment. We have left the, 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 the original. It's been infiltrated. What do they know we're handed over to? So we need to reverse to where we missed it from. God helping us. So my concern also, you know, for Josiah was the way Josiah died. It was not palatable. Josiah died a death that was not necessary for him. How did he die? The king of uh, Egypt was going to battle against another set of people. And Josiah wanted to fight against him. And the king of Egypt told Josiah, when you read for verse 18 of 2 Chronicles 35, he said, I'm not fighting against you. I'm going to fight a battle that God has asked me to go and fight against those who have been at war with me and my household. And God has asked me to make hurry and go and fight against them. He said, do not fight. Let's, 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 you, 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 you destroy yourself because the Lord is not with you. It is the same God who asked me to go and fight this battle. So leave me to fight the battle. Josiah disguised himself and went and fight the battle that didn't concern him because he thought he was powerful. Ah, Josiah. And that is why Jeremiah had to compose the lamentation for Josiah. You see, lamentation of, of, of Josiah. Jeremiah composed the lamentation of how that great and mighty man that prophetic seed died a death that was not supposed to be his. He died in a very painful way. An arrow shot was shot at him from the battle and he came. And then he died because of that arrow in the place of battle. He made a mistake. I was wishing God, why did he preserve me like he preserved Joseph? And Joseph was almost killed when he went to join affinity with Ahab. And he narrowly escaped it. I said, Why well, God, with all this great thing that this man has done, why didn't you even preserve him? Well, maybe God knows that if you leave him, he may still backslide. And do greater things. Maybe that is why God allowed, allowed him to die and then go and rest. But in any case, Josiah was a great, a great, you know, you know, political leader. He was one of the greatest leaders that Israel produced after David. You, it's nobody, I don't think when I say anybody who have who actually you know did what Josiah did. Such a great, you know, remarkable achievement of King Josiah of Judah. Amen. So, what do we learn? From the death of Josiah. Amen. Is that we should learn to listen to God. There were prophets in Judah and then in, in, in Judah. Why did Josiah go and ask all the prophets to ask to inquire of God whether I should go to that battle? You see, he went presumptuously. No matter how great you have become, you need to continue to consult. He didn't consult God. Okay, the man told you that it is God that asked him to go and fight. So why didn't you go back to God and go and consult God? So may the Lord help us. So Josiah didn't consult God. He didn't make inquiry. He didn't seek for direction. He didn't seek for counsel from the Lord. He went presumptuously to go and fight. And he died. He, it was a careless death. And that is how many believers are dying carelessly. Careless death. What didn't concern you? Amen. So we have to, we have to be careful. Amen. Careless deaths. Why do believers die carelessly? Amen. It's because they don't want, they don't seek God. They don't, they don't ask God. They don't get direction from God. They don't get approval from God. They don't go to God to ask questions. And that is, believers kept dying carelessly. Care, many, many great men of God have died care, recklessly, carelessly because they are what? Because they didn't look, they didn't seek counsel from God before they took certain action. I'm praying for myself. That God should help me. That every action I will take as a man of God, as a child of God, I must ask for direction. We must ask for direction. Even as small as, as you think it may be. 
The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus that will not will not uh, be careless like Josiah to presumptuously to go to battle without asking the Lord. As a child of God, anything you want to do, go to God, ask God. He seek cancer from God so that you will not you will not be a, you will not be a casualty. Because Josiah would have seek cancer from God, he would have not died. He would have not died in this way. He died. So we have great lesson to learn from Josiah. No matter how powerful you have been, no matter how great you are, you, you have been with the Lord. Always continue in everything you do. Let's seek the face of God. In everything we do, let's seek direction from God. You want to start a branch of church? Did you see God's direction before you started the branch of church? You started. You want to? You want to? You want to go to go and study? Did you see God's direction before you go for that study? You want to go to a to 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 Bible school? You want to go to? You should. You want to marry? Did you see God's direction? Amen. So we need to seek the face of God. Praise Lord. You want to travel abroad? Have you? Did you hear God? Did you hear God well? Did you seek the face of God before you travel abroad? You just hear that people are jackpotting, and then you, you want to jackpot. Is that what God is asking you to do? You hear people are investing into into a business. I've had a lot of people come to me. Hey, this one is business. I don't. I do. I don't, I don't rush into anything. So we need direction. We need to hear from the Lord. Imagine how Josiah died. The, the king of Egypt like told Josiah, "It is God that asked me to go and fight this. But don't don't come so that you will not so that you will not be fighting against God because you have yourself." He didn't listen. He didn't, and he didn't go back to God to go and see, even though he cannot pray. He would have gone to any of the priests or any of the prophets to say, "Okay, please see what is happening. I, I need. Please can you help me make inquiries?" And with the with the with the level Josiah was operating. God would have not tarried to speak to him if he made a fire. My prayer for you is that you will not die careless deaths. You will not die reckless deaths. My prayer for you, you will not die like, you know, you will not, you will not just die like that. You will not die a shameful death. The Lord will preserve you. The Lord will preserve us. We shall be well with you. We shall be well with me. The Lord will give us wisdom. The Lord will give us wisdom and understanding. That we will be able to, you know, know that in everything we, we, we want to do, any major step we want to take, we must go to God. Any little step must go to God for direction. The Lord bless you. I remain your brother, Moses Judge and God Special, the coordinator of National Regional Program, National Magistrate Vision Project, and also the coordinator of uh, the Covert Discipleship Center, a project that is going on. The Lord bless you as you continue to support this ministry in the project that is going on. In the city, the city of refuge, we are building for convert to Christianity and for the dis internal displaced people, the IDP, who are in their millions in Nigeria. The Lord bless you. Please, I want to urge you, if you are blessed by this message, please make sure that uh, you also like it. Press the like button, click this, uh, the subscribe button, and also make sure you circulate it widely. The Lord will bless you richly in Jesus' name. If you want to support the ongoing project to build a place, for convert to Christianity and internet displaced people, you can use the number on the screen. Is a WhatsApp number. God bless you as you partner with us in in you know in establishing state of refuge in this country, Nigeria. Shalom. The Lord bless you.